Hello and welcome to this review of my Unicomp 58036. Yes, this is a Model M, but unlike most of the ones you'll have seen so far, this is the rubber dome version. This video has been a regular request for years actually, as it's not really like most other rubber domes, but we'll get to that in a bit. It's also surprisingly uncommon. I found about a dozen of these at the recycling center, which all came from the same source, and I took them home for a few quid in total. Before I left the UK, I gave most of these away at the Sotten meetup earlier this year, but I kept one to show you guys because it's quite an interesting animal. The first thing to note is that the construction is basically exactly the same as a regular Model M, including the same thick PVC case, barrel plate, membrane and riveted steel back plate. So just like a normal M, it weighs hefty 2 kilos. The only big difference is that instead of buckling springs, it uses rubber domes to actuate the membranes. Considering the imposing size and heavy weight, I can confirm that, yes, shifting 12 of these by bicycle is a bit of an undertaking. Being built like an M comes with many advantages though, as it's basically indestructible. No wonder these keyboards are kind of an American icon, IBM was the best back in the day. Even stuff like the cable, which is non-detachable on Unicomp models and most Lexmarks, and the flip-out feet are exactly the same. The only differences are the rubber domes and the keycaps. Yes, the keycaps are different as well, because of course normal M keycaps have a slot for the buckling spring to slide into, but rubber domes need a pusher of some sort to push them down, so they're two-way incompatible with normal M keycaps. They are the same type though, just like the buckling spring keycaps that IBM's usual massive chunks of PBT with die sublimed printing, which means the caps don't yellow and the lettering will basically never wear off. It's expensive to make, but they're some of the best keycaps out there. They're also the older one-piece design, like on the Model F. Some other M's also had these one-piece keycaps, but they're most well known for their funky two-part detachable keycaps that were present on the majority of models. Some people like the one-part caps the best, others prefer the two-part ones. I don't know if they ever made two-part caps for the Rubber Dome M models, but all the ones I found were one-part. The keyboard was made for some company called IO, I think, with this strange logo here, and it appears to be a terminal model of some kind. This one has a PS2 plug, but many others had a terminal jack, and the layout and some of the legends are a bit non-standard. Like many other terminal models, it's got a reset button here, an enter key here, and a field exit button. And for some reason, the backspace is white. Also, the numpad is a bit different, and it doesn't appear to have lock lights for some reason, which is very old-fashioned. Like IBM, Unicom did and still do all kinds of custom keycaps and layouts, just like this one. This one is part number 58.036, and it's from 1999. Made in the US of A. And then we come to the switches, and this is where it starts to get really weird really fast. See, unlike most rubber domes, which are fairly big and thin and floppy, the domes in the Rubber Dome Model M are much smaller and nearly solid. I have a mat of one of these I disassembled a while ago to show you, and they're really strange. The domes are unmistakably stiff and snappy compared to other rubber domes, and possibly because of their solidity, they have an unmistakably short travel key feel. Yes, they are very tactile, and some people really like these. In fact, they're sometimes named among the best dome keyboards out there, but honestly, I don't really like it. The stiffness and short travel really throw me off, and because of the strong tactility and solidity of the domes, you bottom out surprisingly hard on this, especially considering it's a rubber keyboard. If you want a great rubber dome keyboard, I stand by my long-standing recommendation of BTC Dome with Slider keyboards. These guys have a very tactile key feel as well, but much more refined and not nearly as blunt or stiff or short travel. The sound is also quite different from other rubber dome keyboards. It's louder than a standard rubber dome board, but atypically full and deep. I don't know whether this is because of the strange characteristics of the rubber mat or the tautness of the Model M chassis, but it's quite distinctive. Listen to this. Just a quick side-by-side -side of the Rubber Dome Model M versus one of those crappy Rubber Dome HP keyboards you see everywhere nowadays. Oh, 
Overall, the board is built like a tank, much like any other M, but the switches just disappoint, especially if you know the mechanical alternative. If you're on the look for a great dome board, get a BTC or a Scorpius or a Topra if you've got too much money and need to get rid of it quickly. Really, this keyboard is kind of okay, better than average for sure, but it's not a great one if I'm honest. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.